In today's lens review, we are looking at a Canon lens that has legendary status with a lot of Canon shooters. It's also one of the oldest lenses you can still buy brand new today. Yes, we are talking about this, the Canon EF 50mm F 1.2L. And I'm gonna start right now. Now I have reviewed loads of lenses on this channel, but none really live up to the name as this lens here. This really does put L in legendary. This is the Canon EF 50mm f1.2, by far one of the longest lasting camera lenses on the market. This dates back all the way to 2006, and it is still available today to buy brand new. So is it worth buying due to the older optical design, or if, let's say you've got a mirrorless camera, is it worth maybe buying the brand new RF 50mm f1.2? All of these answers and more will hopefully be answered in this lens review. So let's kick this lens review off with build quality. Now, as you can expect from an older style lens, the build quality has changed dramatically over the kind of 20 years that this lens has been out. This is definitely an older style lens and by the looks of it, looking at it, you can definitely see that. The newer lenses are a lot more minimalist and I actually prefer the build quality. This has got this nice satin premium plastic finish, but it is still a very plasticky and it, very similar to the Canon 85mm f1.2. But because it's an L lens, you have all of the features that you'd expect. So you've got a focus window on the front, as well as an autofocus to manual focus switch here. This doesn't have any other buttons because it doesn't have image stabilization. And it's also got a focus ring here. Now the focus ring is quite small, although it is a small lens, but it does have full time manual focusing with a clutch mechanism. This lens is also quite small and light as well, only having eight elements in six groups. I must say they were a lot simpler back in the day lenses. Lenses today have a lot more complicated optics and sometimes it can make them a lot larger, but also a lot heavier. So having a nice small, 50 nifty 50 mil is really good and this lens kind of really encapsulates that really small really lightweight and to be honest really simple and easy to use and the build quality is to boot full weather sealing and a full metal construction so overall there's only really one score i can give it and that is the full marks the 10 out of 10. So now let's move on to image quality. Now this is definitely an interesting one for this lens yes it is an l series lens but because of the older design optical formula, does it really stand up to the test when it comes to a lot of the newer lenses? Now, this lens really should have it all going for. It's a 50 mil, so there should really be good image quality there, but it's also a really high quality prime lens. So I am expecting exquisite image quality, especially as Canon are still asking around 1400 pounds for it. So let's go and have a look at a few sample images I took at one of the latest weddings that I've done. So the sample images today of a wedding that I've recently done. And I must say, I really do like a standard 50 mil when it comes to weddings. It's not too telephoto, but it's also not too wide angle as well, offering a good balance in between those two. I find the best three lenses for weddings are 35, 50 and 85. And I found me relying on the 50 mil a lot more on this wedding than others, just due to it being a little bit more compact, a little bit smaller than the traditional weddings I do. Now, I did like the center sharpness of this lens, but I did find the corners softer than I was expecting, especially for an L lens. I also thought this lens suffered from a little bit more chromatic aberration than I was expecting. Take this photo here. You can see if we go ahead and zoom in just ever so slightly, you can see that there is definitely more chromatic aberration on the high contrast edges than I was expecting from a lens that comes in over 1400 pounds. I also thought this lens did suffer sometimes from very ugly bokeh. I often found that if it's not too far out of focus, but not also too close to the plane of focus, it created this ugly looking, very distorted bokeh, which definitely was sometimes off-putting on some photos. It didn't always appear, but it's definitely something to note. But overall, I thought the image quality of this lens was really good. And I must say, it was very dependable when it comes to the autofocus, but we'll talk about that in a bit. So let's go and have a look more scientifically at a graph. 
So take this graph photo here. So this was shot at 50 millimeters at f1.2 wide open for this lens. Now, if we go ahead and zoom in, you can see this lens is decently sharp, especially thinking this is a wide open at f1.2. This is letting a lot of light in. This isn't a very bright room that I shoot this in, and it was a shot around 2 50th of a second. So 1.2 is great for dark or low lit photography. But if we go ahead and zoom into the corners, you can see the story is a little bit different. You'll notice it's a lot darker due to the vignetting, which we'll get to in a bit, but this lens also isn't the sharpest. You can see there is definitely a loss of contrast, but the chromatic aberration doesn't look too bad. So if we go ahead and step down to F2, you'll notice that the overall brightness of the photo is a lot more consistent. Now, if we go ahead and zoom in, the sharpness is about the same. And if we go over to the corners, they have, uh, I would say, sharpened up a little bit. Now we can, definitely fix it overall by stepping around to around f2.8. I think anything beyond f2.8 overall is very similar, but anything before that, I did notice it was very hit and miss when it comes to the overall sharpness of this lens. And if you go ahead and step down to f4, again, sharpness does increase a little bit, and it's the same story with f5.6. And then I think this lens overall scored the highest sharpness when around f8. So now let's go and have a look at distortion and vignetting. So this graph image here firstly is uncorrected. So peripheral illumination and chromatic aberration has been turned off. And as you can see, I must say the distortion and vignetting is very poor at f1.2. Now this lens shouldn't suffer from distortion, but for some reason it does. Prime lenses, especially non-wide angle prime lenses, shouldn't suffer from distortion. But as you can see, there is a mild amount of barrel distortion here. Probably wouldn't be noticeable in a lot of photos, but it is still there. And as you can see, this lens does suffer from very bad vignetting. Now we can push that vignetting right to the corners and F2, but it still remains even at F2.8. The only way of really removing this vignetting is by stepping down to around about F4. And that's pretty much the same story with F5.6 and F8. There is pretty much no vignetting beyond that point, but at F1.2, F2 and F2.8, there is very noticeable vignetting. So not great for this lens when it comes to distortion and vignetting. So as you can see, the image quality just isn't there anymore. It might have been absolutely revolutionary back in 2006, but a lot has changed. The image quality is nowhere near as good as some of the Sigma lenses that are just half of the price. And with an eight bladed rounded aperture diaphragm, you've got to see that that Bokka just isn't as good as a lot of the newer lenses that have up to 11 aperture blades. So I've got to admit, I didn't like that uh, kind of overall Bokka, and I thought the distortion and vignetting was very poor for a lens of this price point. I also thought the soft corners just didn't really sell this lens for me. I've got to admit, I did prefer the Sigma and Torquina lenses. I must say, even the Canon EF 50mm f1.8 that's only just over £100, I would say has this beat in a lot of aspects. And this is a really expensive lens, so I can't give it a very high score here. It is good, but I must say it really hasn't aged very well. So I'm only going to be giving it a 7 out of 10 for image quality. So now let's move on to size and weight. And this is where this lens really does start to stand out from the crowd, from the variety of other 50 mils we've got on the market. Because of the simpler optical formula, this lens can be a lot smaller and a lot lighter. Again, only eight elements in six groups. So compare it to the law modern version, that is a lot more complicated. So let's have a look at the size first. So here we've got a graph here from basically all of the Canon lenses and Sigma lenses that are currently on the market. Obviously, there are more 50 mils. Oh, we've obviously got the 50 mil f1.8 as by far the smallest, but you can see there are two lenses that really stand out here. And this is the brand new RF1, but also the Sigma 50 mil as well. You can see that this lens really is very small, thinking this is the one of the only two 1.2 aperture lenses. So if you're after a small, lightweight 50 mil prime lens, then this really is one of your better options. Obviously, there are smaller lenses out there, but offering the f1.2 aperture, this really does stand out from the crowd, but being the smallest f1.2 on my list today. So now let's move on to the weight of this lens. Now, it definitely falls in the middle of the pack when it comes to the weight. It isn't the heaviest, but it by far isn't the lightest. 
just due to this being an f1.2 aperture. So let's start off with this lens here. This lens comes in at just 580 grams. Now, if we go and have a look at the f1.4, this lets in 33% less light just due to being an f1.4. That comes in just 290 grams, so a lot lighter. Then if we go ahead and compare it to the f1.8, which lets in half the amount of light just due to it being an f1.8, that comes in at 159 grams, by far one of the lightest Canon lenses on the market, period. But obviously Sigma do an offering as well. And Sigma do a range of really good art lenses, but the downside is they are big and they are heavy. This lens comes in at a whopping 815 grams. So it's heavier than this lens here, while still only offering an f1.4. So this still lets in 33% more light. And then obviously Canon do the monster 50mm f1.2 RF lens designed for their mirrorless cameras. Now this is by far the heaviest and biggest lens that we have today, and that comes in at a whopping 950 grams. So overall, this lens scored decently when it comes to size and weight. And with a filter thread of just 72 millimeters, this lens definitely isn't going to be the largest lens in your camera bag. So because of that, I'm going to be giving it an eight out of 10 for size and weight. Now let's move on to autofocus and what this lens is like using it for video. Well, I've got to admit, I did actually like this lens when it comes to video. I think the autofocus stood up to the test, especially thinking this is an f1.2 aperture lens. Now, to say this lens doesn't have image stabilization is a bit of a moot point. I don't know any f1.2 aperture that offers image stabilization built in. Now, obviously I used it on the brand new Canon EOS R5, which has IBIS, which is in-body image stabilization, which means I don't necessarily need to rely on the optical stabilization of a lens. But if you do require it, I would maybe recommend a zoom lens or the 85mm f1.4, which I've recently tested and you can check it down in the description. So let's move on to the autofocus. Now, I have tested two f1.2 aperture lenses, the Sigma 35mm f1.2, as well as the Canon 85mm f1.2. And both of these lenses were crap when it comes to autofocus. They were slow as heck. I must say, the only realistic place that you could use the Canon 85mm f1.2 was a studio where the subjects just weren't moving. If you wanted to use it for, let's say, a wedding or an event, people were just moving too fast for the autofocus to keep up, and you just ended up with very out of focus backgrounds, or you were ending up with slightly blurred faces. It just didn't really work. So I was expecting the same with this lens, but I've got to admit, this is, was the polar opposite of what I was expecting. This stood up to the test when it came to the autofocus. Really quick and really precise, and it worked really well with the mirrorless cameras. Again, I tested it with the Canon EOS R5, and I've got to admit, for video and for photography, it really did, really did stand up to the test. And I've got to admit, for a lens that was built in 2006, they were really forward thinking when it comes to the autofocus. It is reliable. So I'm gonna be giving it an eight out of 10 for the autofocus and the quality it came when it comes to video. So now let's move on to the elephant in the room and that is price. Now, again, this is an L lens and so far it's lived up to expectations in some aspects, but I've got to admit, the image quality wasn't very good. So what are Canon asking for? Well, because you can still buy this brand new, but it's still an old lens, I'm gonna do the brand new price and I'm gonna have a look around and see what it is like secondhand. So brand new, this lens comes in at 1,479 pounds. By far one of the more expensive 50 mils on the market today. And thinking this lens is old. Now, if we go and have a look at secondhand, you can get it for around 800 to 900 pounds. So you can knock about 500 pounds off the asking price if you're willing to go and have a look at second hand. But obviously, this isn't the only 50 mil on the market. There are tons. So I'm gonna narrow it down to Canon and Sigma. So Canon obviously do three other variants of this. They do the 1.2, they do the 1.4 and they do the 1.8. And obviously they also do an RF 1.2 as well. So let's go and have a look at the 1.4 first. So the 1.4 comes in dramatically less at just 379 pounds brand new. And if you're willing to look at it, go for a second hand one, you could probably get one for around 200 pounds. Then let's go and have a look at the Nifty 50. This is an amazing lens. I've got to it for the price, by far the best 50 mil on the market, coming in at just 119 pounds. That's right, or just over 100 pounds, 14 times less 
than this lens here, which is dramatically less. So if you're after a small, lightweight, very cheap lens, you can't go wrong with that nifty 50. But obviously, Sigma do an offering as well. The Sigma 50mm f1.4, and that lens comes in at 649 grams. So still cheaper than the f1.4, but definitely comes with better image quality. Although you are losing about 33% light between f1.2 and f1.4. And obviously Canon, if you are shooting mirrorless, so if you're shooting with the R5 or R6, you've obviously got the RF 50mm f1.2. Now this is pretty much all of the lenses rolled up into one. The best when it comes to autofocus, but also the best when it comes to image quality. But Canon are asking an absolute mountain load when it comes to price, coming in at a whopping £2,389. So unless you've got very deep pockets, that 50mm is going to be out of reach for most photographers. So you can really see if you're willing to go secondhand, this lens isn't too badly priced, but brand new, way out of the market for most photographers. And I'd definitely recommend either the Sigma or Canon F1.4 equivalent. So I can't give it too high of a score because it is very expensive still. I'm only gonna be giving it a five out of 10 for price. So it's that point in the video guys where we now work out is this worth a spot in your camera bag by looking at the pros and cons of this lens. So firstly, let's go and have a look at the pros of this lens. So to kick the pros off, we've got to talk about the build quality of this lens. This lens is absolutely built like a brick. If you're a studio or even a landscape photographer, this lens with the weather ceiling is going to really stand up to the test. This lens is one of very few lenses now that offers an aperture of f1.2. So if you're after a really bright aperture lens, then this lens and the 85mm are pretty much the only lenses out there. This lens has also got good center sharpness. It is let down by the corners, but overall the image quality is quite good. This lens is also smaller and a lot lighter than the RF f1.2. So if you're debating, if you've only got a small camera bag, this lens is definitely one for you. This lens has also got really good autofocus, especially if you think this is an f1.2, there's a lot of glass to move. So it's got good autofocus. So now we've looked at the pros, let's go and have a look at the cons and why you shouldn't buy this lens. This is an older style lens, so the overall optical formula has definitely dated. And especially the build quality, I do prefer sometimes the newer build quality of the new RF L lenses. Again, due to the older optical formula, it hasn't got the best image quality with very soft corners and also quite dark vignetting. This lens also suffers from weirdly odd, ugly bokeh. It doesn't always appear in your photos, but when it does present ugly bokeh, I must say it isn't good looking. This lens has also got quite bad color fringing or chromatic aberration, especially on high contrast edges, which can be a letdown to think how expensive this lens is. And it is still quite an expensive lens, coming in at over £1,400. If you went ahead and look at Sigma or even other Canon lenses, you can get definitely better value for money. So as you can see, there is an even amount of pros and cons. So let's go ahead and now move on to just final thoughts. So after using this lens for about two weeks and shooting a wedding, but also shooting a few other automotive stuff, what do I think? What are my final thoughts? Well, I must say I was impressed by this lens. It really does live up to the name, but due to the older design, it can be let down when it comes to build quality and specifically image quality. The corners were really bad. I also thought the distortion vignetting was a big letdown to think how expensive this lens is. And if we go and have a look at a lot more modern lenses, such as the Canon RF f1.2, or if we go ahead and look at the Sigma 50mm f1.2, which is cheaper than this lens here, you are going to get better image quality. So it really does depend on what's important to you. If you're after a really bright aperture lens, then this 50mm f1.2 is going to be perfect. Just bear in mind those downfalls that the older optical formula happens to have. But if you're not too fussed with f1.2 and you're fine with f1.4, I'd probably recommend either the Sigma or Tokina lenses on the market. They're definitely more expensive than the 50mm f1.4 that Canon offer, but they're nowhere near as expensive as this lens. And overall, I think those lenses have the best performance when it comes to image quality, size and weight, and also autofocus. So overall, I think this lens did score quite high, but I didn't think it should have, I think it should have scored higher. And if I, if I reviewed this maybe seven to 10 years ago, it definitely would have scored a lot higher. But due to the performance of modern lenses today, this lens is now being really left in the dust. So overall, good, but could be better.
Well, thank you guys for sticking to the end of this video. If it guys helped you out, make sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know what you think of this lens. Do you own it? Have you rented it before? Or are you thinking of purchasing it? Make sure to write it down in the comments. I would love to hear your feedback. Again, guys, if you want to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, it really does help my channel grow. Also, guys, if you want to hit the bell notification so you guys don't miss any of my latest content. Now, if you want to look at more Canon reviews, I can actually got a playlist just up here of all my recent RF lenses. But if you're more interested in older lenses, I also do a range of EF reviews as well. And I've got my playlist just down here. But of course, until next time, guys, keep creating.